You are welcome back to this section of this training titled After NYC, What Next? Uh, I can even tell you that this training alone does not apply to only NYC alone, but also applies to every stage you find yourself in life. Anyway, let's move ahead. In this section, I'll be talking about the courage to face the unknown. I want you to understand that many people have passed this stage and have succeeded. If you will read very well, you take your time to go through so many things online, read books, even of successful people here in Nigeria, you will understand that they passed through NYC and they have succeeded in life. And so you don't have to be scared, even, even if you have failed before, like I mentioned in the previous session, even if you have failed in the past, that should not tie you down. That should actually spur you on to greater heights, saying, telling yourself that even if I failed in the past, I am not going to fail again. Life is what you make of it. Life doesn't happen by chance, it happens by choice. The things that happen to you are not by chance, they are by choice. Life is whatsoever you make of it. If you think you're a failure, so be it. As a man thinks in his heart, so the Holy Bible says. So is he. So if you think you are a failure, you can't get jobs, there are no jobs, the government has not provided jobs, you can continue to throw tantrums in the air. You remain the same. But I want to tell you, replace that fear of the unknown with curiosity. I want to know. I want to know things. I want to know more about this thing that I, I don't know. Instead of having that fear, ah, and there are no jobs. Replace it with, how do I get jobs? What are the steps I need to take? Now, by doing that, you are conditioning your mind. You are positioning your mind to a, a, a certain kind of level whereby you begin to ask questions. And the more you ask the right type of questions, the more you begin to move closer to the things you need. Don't just desire. Make the demand. This is one area I need to speak to youths of this generation. Youths of this generation are waiting on the government. They are waiting on their parents. They are waiting on everybody to set them up or settle them. Yes, I am not saying the government should not play a, an important role in your life. No. But I want to tell you, if you continue to wait for the government to provide you that good job, you wait forever. If you don't take the bull by the horn and position yourself, condition yourself, and demand, yes, rather than desire. It is said that if wishes were horses, beggars would ride. And it is said that a beggar has no choice. I was uh, speaking with, I was... I actually had that because one of the things that I also do is I write professional CVs. I write professional CVs and I work on cover letters too. I was speaking, uh, one, I got a job from somebody who wanted me to write a professional CV. After various conversations back and forth, we were chatting via BBM and uh, when he told me to write a cover letter, he said a generic cover letter. But I now told him, look, even if I want to write a generic cover letter, give me a job uh, a, a place or a job description of a particular vacancy so that because your cover letter should actually be tied, be, be formatted, be conditioned, should be streamlined, should be customized to uh, uh, that particular job vacancy. He now said, uh, I just want any job. I, I, was, I was shocked. How can you as a graduate say you want any job? No, it is not possible. You read a Greek, you say you want to go and work in a bank. Then it shows that number one, first and foremost, you don't know why you read a Greek. And now, if you were given just that a Greek, now listen to me, don't get me wrong. If you were given that a Greek and you now have taken out, uh, taken out time to, to and you, your major desire is to, your purpose in life is to work in the, in the banking sector, and you now condition yourself, you do all things that are necessary legally to ensure that you seek it, that is different. But for a graduate to say, I just want any job, it means that you are not coordinated. It means you don't know where you are going. That's a fact. No matter how hard it is, you either, it's either you leave it or you take it. You don't know where you are going. You can't just leave your house in the morning and, uh, and stop your bus and say, and the, uh, the driver asks where are you going. Say, nowhere. That is how many people live their lives. I just want a job. I want a job. What kind of job? You need to be specific. What kind of job do I need? What kind of job is uh, is my purpose? Is my career? I even asked the, the young man, "Do you have a career path?" He said, "Career path." You need to have a career path. 
And that is why I said, you need, you need to summon the courage to face your own. It is God that gave me the courage through his son Jesus. If not, I would have not been able. I know the things my ears have had. I have a younger brother. Okay, let me put family issues aside. Now, let me say this. As the firstborn of the house, I'm expected by now, I ought to have gotten married, settled down. But no, I am pursuing my purpose. I'm pursuing my vision. And my parents are not all that happy with it. Though they are not forcing me or coercing me into getting married at a certain age. But the things I ought to do for them at this age of my life, I am not doing it yet. Not because I don't want to do it, but because I am incapa incapacitated presently. Why? I'm pursuing my vision. I remember the first day I went to Peter King College of Music, and uh, by the way, Peter King College of Music happens to be a place that has produced the likes of Lagbaja and even Asha. The first day I went there, I got there and I had the sounds of musical instruments right, left, front and back. That day, it was as if a vacuum in me was filled. I cannot take, money cannot buy that kind of joy, it cannot buy that kind of happiness. Money can never buy it. So don't just desire, make the demand. I decided to follow my path. Even if it takes me longer to get married, I don't want to wake up, I don't want to grow old and my uh, children begin to ask me, Daddy, why didn't you follow your vision? Uh, uh, Daddy, why? No, I don't want to be a failure, even if it takes me longer time. Age is just, you know, you might be thinking, uh, look, don't live your life according to societal ex expectation. Live your life the way God wants you to live it. You are not living your life to please people. You are living your life to please God and to fulfill His purpose for you. And reggae music has is taking a toll on my time. I know. But at the same time, I'm also learning to manage it alongside my company. So as I go to school, I don't go to school all the days of the week. I have specific days I go to school. And I have specific times I manage my business. Since most of my business is online, I can, whenever I get jobs, I create time. Even while in school, I, I, I go about with my laptop and my internet connection. I do whatever it is I want to do. And I, I still move on in life. Champion your own course. Now, don't wait for anybody to teach you what to do. Take up the challenge. You have failed in the past. You have succeeded in the past. That is the past. What do you need to do to move ahead? Friend, this is the time for you to champion your own course. Don't wait to be pushed around. Don't wait to be, to, hey, what are you going to do now? Take steps. If you do if you don't know what to do, ask questions, make the demand, champion your own cause, and I want to tell you that you can make it. That is a fact of life. You can make it with God on your side. With God, all things are possible. If I had, I spent 11 years, 8 months in the university before I graduated, I was one month away from my from 30 before I graduated, and that was what uh, enabled me to go for national youth service. And after that, coming back, still able to face, to, to go back to my original purpose, I'm not living my life according to what others expect me. No, I am living my life the way God wants me. Even though there are there will be challenges, there will be temptations. Many a times I've been tempted to pick up my, my credentials and start applying online again. But whenever I see it, I just put it down. I put myself I've abandoned, put my certificates aside. The temptation is there because there are times when there is no money, yes. But I've got to live my life according to God's plan for my not someone else's. Let me move on to the next session. You might be surprised when I say job at prospects are found everywhere. The reason why many people are uh, shouting that there are no jobs is number uh, the reasons are not far fetched. Number one, lack of information. Many people don't have the right kind of information. And number two, some have the right kind of information, they do, but they don't have the right mindset, the right attitude towards that information. They say, ah, look, oh, ah, there's vacancy, don't worry, they have already employed the number of people they want to employ. What stops you from trying? Even if the Nigerian environment is such that people that will be employed have already been employed, what stops you from, what about the experience you give while applying or while being short this step or to test? You might meet somebody who knows somebody and you, you get connected somewhere, somehow. Don't have this mind of somebody who is already defeated, somebody who is hopeless, somebody who doesn't think that life life can, can actually be fruitful and be beneficial. No! 
there are jobs everywhere though it may, it may not be surplus but i can tell you whether public or private there are jobs another reason why so many people won't get jobs is because they are not qualified yeah, some people might have a first class, might have a two one, but they are not qualified because they went to school to do it. Now, if this applies to you, I am not apologizing. No, I am not. Many people pay their way through school. We know that. Some people cannot defend their certificates. And these are the same set of people that will go there. They, they, will, they will apply for one job or the other. They say ah, there are no jobs. They didn't pick them. Uh, look, you might have paid your way through school. Even if you get somebody who gives you the opportunity to work somewhere, your product, your 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 promotion will be determined by your productivity. You might be saying, hey, this is Nigeria, anything goes. Look, a time is still coming in Nigeria where professionalism will still be at the will become the major requirement. Skillfulness, the ability to do things to contribute positively. It's still come. There are some co I won't start a company and employ somebody who cannot defend his own certificate, somebody who can't have value to my own company. No, I won't. I can't. And if it's a person that has a third class like me, you might be saying based on the same federal flock together. No, I'm talking about excellence. It's about somebody who has a first class and can add value. If I say somebody who has a two-two and can add value better than the first class, I'd rather go with the two-two. Because in the workplace, it's not your certificate. As somebody, as one a consultant said, it's your certificate. Now, what do you sabi? Now, in the workplace, yeah, your certificate is just for documentation. Now, what did you sabi? I remember while doing my IT in Nestle Nigeria PLC. As an IT student, then I did my IT in September 2005 to February 2006. So it was a six months IT. I did my IT in the Human Resources Department, Nestle Nigeria PLC, Agbara Factory in Ogun State. According to company policy, IT, IT students were not allowed to use staff computers. But because of the positive contribution I made to the workplace. I got a time I was, uh, there is this, uh, um, I forgot it now, uh, there was this sick leave and uh, some other uh, things we enter on the Excel data sheet on the system. I, you, my boss, my direct boss says that I do it on his behalf. I, I was knowledgeable by God's grace to a certain extent. And then I had not even started my computer training school. Because over time, I'd become acquainted with computers and I... Now, let me put this. Knowing how to knowing how to browse the internet does not mean you are computer literate. Forget about that. Knowing how to use your BB, your iPad, your... All those gadgets does not mean you are computer literate. Get down and learn how to use compute the computer. Those basic three packages, Microsoft Word, Excel and PowerPoint, those three are important in the workplace. During my, uh, before I closed out my computer training school in 2012, in preparation for service, I remember I have trained, uh, I trained a graduate of English. All she was just saying was that she had a computer at home and he, she was just giving me a, I trained her. And I remember the story of a particular young man. He had an ended accountancy. He was already working somewhere and he applied somewhere else and after the interview and every other thing he was deemed the best person the best candidate for the job so after he was interviewed and everything had been concluded you know the question that made him made them drop him are you computer literate he said no he told him sorry we cannot employ you and when he came to my to my company then he said he had been postponing postponing and postponing his computer training you can't be in this 21st century and not be computer literate the fact that you know how to use blackberry does not mean you are computer literate some people cannot type give them a, a, a document in word uh, give them a, a document a manuscript let them type it in word and format it properly tell them you is it uh, you give it 1.5 line spacing uh, the font should be in uh, 13 the the, the font, font should be 13 uh, uh, points Yes, the, the, the font face should be Arial or Calibri, or the font type should be in uh, Times New Roman, or Vadana or Tahoma, or you tell, okay, the font, I mean, the, the document must be justified, then the title of the document must be centralized and bolded and underlined. Some people, on the, on your, then you tell them the margin, top margin or bottom margin must be 0 0.5 inches, and left and right margin must be uh, 0 0.7. Some people can, if they hear that, they are terrified. They can't use the Excel. Tell them to create a simple formula to add their uh, numbers in a row together. They can't do it. 
or tell them to make a, a simple presentation. You, look, you, that is one of the things that will not make you get a job. You don't know how to use Microsoft Word. You don't know how to use Microsoft Excel. You don't know how to use PowerPoint. And you see, you are looking for a job. What kind of job are you looking for? Even if it's not used in your place. I, I remember some years ago, I read a, a, a vacancy advert on, uh, in the newspapers. Uh, for the position of a driver and one of the uh, uh, qualities there, I mean, respond, uh, yes, one of the things I was asked was they must be completely illiterate. Now, tell me, what is it you, in this present uh, generation that you don't need a computer for? I see a computer, uh, you, you, are, you are a graduate and you don't know how to use computer. I'm very sorry. You just have a new definition of illiteracy. Being a graduate without being computer literate. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. Our major challenge now is how to locate the few available jobs. And another challenge is the necessary tools to locate the jobs. In this uh, training, I'll be going, uh, I'll be teaching you how to locate the few available jobs and how to and how to have the necessary tools. I want I will recommend the book written by one of my friends to you. I will uh, try as much as possible. I'll bring up the the picture of that book. So I'll meet you in the next section. Thank you for listening.